Hey guys, this is Veron from Speak of the Stars and welcome back to my channel. So today we are back with a digital drawing. Actually, I'll just be mostly doing sketches today. Uh, I needed a break from trying to do an intricate piece and I've been having a hard time trying to be content or trying to do finish that piece, I guess. I'm, I'm not content with what's with it every time I look at it. So for now, that piece is just there. I need a break, so I'm just doing some sketches. Nothing serious. I didn't even want to do colors or rendering with this, but I kind of do somewhere in the middle. I couldn't resist. Originally, I, th I intended this to just be like sketches, hatching, shading, and then just leave it alone, but eh. <laughs> so I haven't really posted any videos. And the reason for that was because a typhoon just passed by the Philippines, or can't even say it passed by, it kind of wreaked havoc in the Philippines recently. Um, this was Typhoon Ulysses, international name Tropical Storm Vamco. Um, yeah, it was big. It was actually quite scary if you see it. Um, the wind was pretty strong. It was raining almost nonstop. It wasn't like at least in my area where I live, the rain wasn't that strong, but the winds were pretty strong and the, the, the devastation it, leave, it left was also pretty big. So if you're not aware, or if, you're, if you live in the Philippines, I'm pretty sure you've heard no end of this. But if you're an interna international viewer, then you might have heard about it a little bit. Basically, a lot of houses were destroyed, a lot of houses were flooded, a lot of valuables were lost. Now, here in my area, uh, Metro Manila in general, we're pretty more or less used to storms and flooding, but the, the flooding that happened this time was a little bit more than what people expected. Um, there were people on the roofs that needed to be rescued. A lot of people, and a lot of people that I do know personally, um, their houses are just filled with a really thick layer of mud, and that's because the flooding was just so bad and it brought so much silt and dirt and mud with it. So a lot of people's belongings were destroyed. Um, people's, people whose houses aren't exactly the sturdiest were pretty much, you know, gone because of the flood and the current of the flood. So a lot of people were affected. And then you'd think that was the end of it. You, you, you know, there's this province that was first hit. And of course, as always, they're going to take a good brunt of it since the, the typhoon is coming from the ocean. So all of the wind, the strength of the wind, all of the rain, it would hit them first. And as the typhoon travels through land, the natural formations of the land, so like mountains, hills, would slowly like kind of break apart the typhoon. So it would go grow weaker and weaker as it passed by. Um, so we thought that the the province that took the brunt of it and the where the typhoon actually passed by, like Metro Manila, was at the end of it. Somewhere in the middle of the night, people started asking for help for another province, and this was in Cagayan and Isabela. Now, this was a little bit more north, and they were also hit by the typhoon. Um, they also had flooding. But what actually made it really disastrous for them was that the dam that was holding the water had to start releasing water because it was already at pretty much max capacity. Now, if a dam reaches max capacity, they should start leading, le um, releasing water because it could explode. And if that dam explodes, pretty much uh, it could flood uh, um, almost all the provinces and, you know, we'd just all be submerged. And if a dam breaks, there's also the threat of dams under it also breaking because of the water pressure and all of that. So the dam has to start releasing water slowly, or not so slowly, they just have to start releasing water. 
And this is pretty much par for the course for anyone living near a dam or a river that when it rains pretty hard, the dams will start releasing water. Uh, unfortunately, something happened. I'm not really sure on what exactly happened, but because the, the dam is releasing so much water and there's already flooding from the typhoon, Cagayan, Isabela, Tugirao, those areas, uh, all were flooded very heavily. There was a area in Cagayan where the people were up on the roofs and they needed rescue in the middle of the night. So suddenly on social media, you start seeing posts about needing help for Cagayan. And the government did try to mobilize its best, but since it's nice nighttime, you know, it's very hard to do rescues at night. Because of visibility. Uh, unfortunately, another incident that happened was that the the water did get uh, charged with electricity. We're not. I'm not particularly sure how. Whether it was through the power lines or something like a generator that was left in the water or something like that. I'm not really sure what actually happened there. Uh, a lot of people are saying different things. So you just know that. The water was charged with electricity. There were rescuers who died because they, you know, got they touched the water and they got electrocuted. So, aside from that, again, houses were flooded. Entire um, subdivisions, I, I'd say subdivisions, but actually, cities were were destroyed pretty heavily by the floods. And this was already a day or hours after the typhoon left the actual landmass of the Philippines. So you'd say it's like a post-typhoon disaster of sorts. Okay, so I'm not about this as an explanation to say that I didn't post because I didn't want to be insensitive. And the videos that I had prepared at the time had, you know, my normal voiceovers recorded a, recorded a couple a week ago or maybe like midweek before the entirety happened. So... I didn't want to post. Um, So I'm posting now to let you know that if you want to help in any way possible, like even for a small amount, a lot of organizations have been organizing donations and food drives and everything like that for all of the victims. So some sources that you perhaps would consider reputable would be organizations like Red Cross, UNICEF, um... I know various companies also started donations. So, like, I know on Gab, if you have the app Gab, which is like the Uber of the Philippines, um, you can buy like a digital product that you can buy a donation using your points, or I think you can also use it through your credit card or your credits or whatever. I know in Lazada, you can also buy something similar and shop as well. So if you want to help out, those are some avenues you can check out. I know some universities also have started donations. So I know like Atelier de Manila, um, the last I checked, I know they were doing in-kind donations. They probably also have cash donations somewhere as well. So you can check them out as well if you, you know, if you're an alumni or if you trust them, please do go ahead. And I do understand that after... All the typhoons that's been passing by, I, I can't even count, but like four or five typhoons have passed by. So I know donor fatigue is pretty high and not to mention COVID is, is also high. So I know that a lot, of, a lot of people don't really have the extra money or leeway to help. So, but, but do understand that like even the smallest amount will help these people. And yeah, it's not a situation you really want to be caught yourself in. So yeah, I, I just wanted this to be a chill video, but you know, when something like that happens, you just can't not say anything. I mean, this I, I mentioned this on my channel, after all. There are some things that you just can't ignore, I suppose. In other news, I heard some shit's been going down in America. <laughs> I mean, like, they're a mess. I mean, we're a mess here as well. So, 
can't really judge them too hard, but they're, they're a mess over there. Um, what else has been happening in the world? Mm, not really sure. <laughs> Personally, I'm I'm fine. I'm safe. If anyone cares, I guess. Uh, my family's safe. We just didn't have electricity, and our water supply's been pretty murky because the dams were stirred up. Other than that, we're okay. What have I been doing? Well, I've been playing Genshin Impact a lot. <laughs> and, well, I've been doing a little bit of job hunting, um, semi-seriously. Uh, I'm still trying to find as much as possible, like, work-from-home setup since I do live with my parents and my grandparents, and that's normal here, just in case you didn't know. Um, I do live with them, so the responsible thing for me is as much as possible try to limit any potential way to bring home the virus and if I can find a job that's work from home that would be the best if I need to go freelance which is starting to look to, it is starting to look to be the case then I should probably start preparing to go freelance yeah yeah that's pretty much it that's, that's been happening in my life get your impact a lot of people are playing it. A lot of my friends are playing it as well. Um, I'm AR42. We, I, I just hit 42 yesterday, actually. So I'm world level 5. I can't say that my characters are world level 5. I, I have Kaya, which is... He's the only one that's more or less already in that level. So I still need to develop his talents and uh, his weapon. I'm trying to build another sword for him. Because I'm currently using Cool Steel, which is an, an, a Hydro Cryo sword. And it, 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 I mean, in a way that it adds damage if something's affected by Hydro Cryo, which is often if you're using Gaia. I, I built him to be like elemental recharge spammy and crit spam. So you can run his NP and his skills quite often with him. But I'm trying to build Sacrificial Sword, maybe him we'll see if i want to see the difference and see if it's any better um yeah i'm working on child or tartalia as well right now i yeah i did gotcha for him i didn't spend money <laughs> i did not spend the cent thankfully um yeah he's great i actually quite like him he works well with my characters and he's my only range character i have amber but she's only for exploration other than that, everyone else needs a lot of work. So, I have Pito, which is the great sword electro user. She's like more counter and shields based. Uh, yeah, I need a lot of work on her. I have Barbara, which is for healing. Shangling is also <laughs> really, really low. So, aside from Tartalia and Kaya. Everyone else needs a lot of work. And even then, they also need a lot of work. My artifacts for them are still purple. Which I should try to get them to gold, but gosh. <laughs> Stamina is painful. There's also an event running right now. It's the... Uh, what do you call it? Fading Star event or something like that? The official event? Yeah, the official event. I just call it the official event. But yeah, I'm playing Genshin. I'm starting to hit a point where I'm just mostly using stamina since I've done all of the world quests. And aside from commissions, there's not much else to do except beat guys up to try to get their materials. Yeah. So I'm starting to return to FGO. Not that I really stop, but I'm returning to FGO and playing it a bit more. I'm starting to spend more time doing other things, so video editing drawing a little bit. Um, I'm starting to have a couple of ideas that I want to try out, but we'll see about that. My chair is really squeaky, which is annoying. Whatever. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope you just enjoy this video. Uh, it was, it, I know it's kind of grim, but yeah, it, it's just something you, I can't not talk about. Anyway, I hope, I hope you like the visuals at least, so 
I really enjoyed the sketching thing, and I might do more studies for like textures and fabrics eventually. So let me know if you enjoyed it, and if you want to see more, let me know if you're okay. And please do stay safe. There's still a pandemic after all. So yeah, I'll see you in the next video, whenever that will be. Hopefully not two weeks from now. Probably will be. <laughs>